Hello, welcome to McSpookies, home of the Spooky Burger. May I take your order? Uh, yeah, uh, wait. I need a minute. Do you need anything, Spidey? Uh, do they have rats, flies, or moths wrapped in spider webs? I eat those because I'm a spider. Oh, I know. Do they have butterfly tacos? I simply love those. Hmm. Let me check. Hey, do you guys have butterfly tacos? Uh, I don't know what that is, sir. Sorry, Spidey. Doesn't sound like they have it. Aw, lemurs. Shoot. That's super uncool. Nah, I'm good, Goulash. I don't need anything. Thanks, though. I'm Spider. Okay. Hey! Hurry up and decide already! You're taking forever! Shut the f*** up, you mother piece of sh**. You better shut your f before I turn you into a pile of goo. Sir, are you ready? Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, can I have a McSpooky Deluxe with absolutely no onions and extra pickles on the side? And a vanilla milkshake with extra whipped cream. Oh, uh, and instead of ketchup in the burger, can you put the blood of a newborn? Uh, what was that last part? Oh, uh, nothing. Sheesh. Wait your turn, will ya? Oh, um, I was wondering, uh, this meal comes with a toy, right? The ghosty McGhost ghost toy? I only ask because... Uh, because my nephew... Spidey, give me a name. <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, uh, Douglas. Yes, uh, my nephew Douglas. He's a good boy. And he needs his toy. That's, that's why I'm asking for him. Your total will be 1013 at the next window. Yes! I think they have it, Spidey. Super sweet. I tell you, Spidey, it was such a good idea to kill that human so we could take his car and go through this drive through Also an equally good idea to skin that person's face so I could wear it as a mask. They'll never know I'm actually a ghoul in disguise. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty sweet. Oh! Hello there, listener. Uh, how long have you been there? Welcome to Spooky Stories. Um, oh, this is awkward. Well, uh, while we wait for my toy, I, I mean meal, uh, why not listen to the first spooky story of the night? This story's called The Legend of Swampy. Ah! <laughs> burgeoning sycamore in the clearing began to rot shortly after the germination, and yet the rot from deep within its center is not malicious. It will still flourish into a serene behemoth made of leaf, bark, and root, casting shade and comfort to whoever may lay underneath its bristling canopy. The rot comes not from natural disruption, but from the tangible hatred that soaked the soil. Is that too much? A little. Are you forgetting what kind of movie this is? I guess you're right. I just wanted to bring the franchise back on track to its roots, you know, its, its origins. What origins? It's about a disgusting swamp monster that eats and kills horny college students. Sure, but when you think of the origins, like the actual true story, you bring it back to the field it all started at, and it'll be great, I swear. It'll bring people to their knees, pleading for us to show them mercy. Well, first off, you're being dramatic. No one would ever act that way in a theater, their home or otherwise. True. Secondly, true story? You're kidding, right? The Legend of Swamp Monster is a true story? Swampy's out there right now. You didn't know it was a true story? I didn't, because it's not. Oh, but it is. You're telling me that in real life, a creepy swamp monster magically appears in front of you whenever you think about him, and he's there to eat you? More or less, but not really. I mean, they, they made a lot of it more paranormal than it actually was, but everything else was completely true. Oh, and I mean, they added all the horny teens and stuff. That was an embellishment. 
Okay, what's the whole story? I'm intrigued. Well, uh, as the story goes, there was an actual monster out there that shares all the characteristics with Swampy. Turns out it's got some kind of like weird defense mechanism that allows it to track down and kill anyone, and I mean anyone, that gets close to figuring out where its true origins actually are, like where he's actually from. Well, you have me scared to ask, where are its true origins? Space. Of course it is. It's true. His spaceship crashed here who knows how long ago, and ever since then, he's been able to protect his ship at all costs. Every single time someone gets close to figuring out where it's hidden, he's able to sense them, track them, and silence them. By eating them. Yes, by eating them. Well, I mean, that's what's assumed anyway. Bodies were never found. His, his tracking process takes a, like a few hours or so. Uh, think of it as being like a pheromone of some kind that he can smell. He, in theory, grabs his small spacecraft thing and uses it to track down the origin of the scent if anyone is close on his tail. Uh, the studio, when they made the original movie, wanted to speed the process up by just making him teleport around, which is complete bullshit. Okay, well, look... I gotta go, but if you're trying to bring this story to the franchise, I'm gonna do you a favor right now and let you know that the studio is not gonna go for it. They're not too keen on swamp monsters flying around in space. But what if I have proof? I found some proof just this morning. Proof. You have proof of this. Proof. There have been disappearances, uh, obviously. But those who have tried searching for him have just, you know, vanished. There's boards all over the internet of people trying to figure out, you know, where he is. But I have something they don't. And what's that? His location. So if what they say is true, shouldn't you be scared? Oh, me? No, I'm safe. We're in L.A. He's actually all the way in Europe. Uh, Those that went missing were all within a certain radius of him. Unless I actually go there, I'll be fine. That's a limit to the scent or whatever? Sure. I mean, could you smell a rose from across the Atlantic? No one on the forums have ever really said anything about the location I, I have. But you'd have to think that there'd be more missing people if he was able to reach everyone in the world, right? Besides, I found this this morning, and it's now, what, 6 p.m.? You think he would have found me by now? Okay, look, man, I know you're stressed and all with making sure this is going to be good, but why don't you put down the coffee and the research and go work on a different project for a little bit? Hey, I know the studio wants to move ahead on that one cute rabbit movie. Maybe you should write a spec script for that. Yeah, maybe. I'll see you later, Charles. I'll see you later, man. Later that night at my apartment, I started to adjust the script I have. How can I make this more of a love letter to the original story and less like another reboot cash-in to a moderately successful horror franchise? I guess that's the balance I'll have to find. I stop on page 30. It's the scene where we see the bright lights for the first time. Each missing person case had reports of bright lights to some degree, so the thought is that Swampy is able to teleport people with a bright light. Either that or he kills them by dissolving them with the strong UV light or something, but no one knows for sure. Reading the words bright light made me realize I've been looking at the bright white screen for just a bit too long and my eyes begin to burn. It's probably time to call it a night anyway. I rub my eyes, and just as they start to readjust, I start to smell something. Something off-putting. A damp, foul smell begins to creep into my nose, and I can't tell what it is or where it's coming from. I check around, but see no signs of spoiled food, dead rat, or anything else out of place, and decide that it's just that I need the rest. Unfortunately, when I stand up and I look toward the hallway... I see a monstrous creature standing with his large body blocking my way. 
but 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 uh, I'm in LA. A bright blue light spills out of the monster's chest and fills the room. All shadows vanish into the carpet. When the light hits my pupils, I don't feel much. I don't feel much when my body is dissolved either. Now that I find myself in what I can only assume is the creature's spaceship, I feel relieved that I'm alive. For the moment, anyway. Though now I am the subject to various sorts of experiments and tests. Most of them I'm okay with, but the ones with the scalpel tend to get a little tiresome. If I do find my way out of this, and that's a pretty substantial if, maybe I'll change his location in the script. Uh, Spidey, did you grab the money from the wallet of the guy we murdered so we could steal his car and drive it through this McSpooky's drive through That same guy whose face I ripped off so I could use it as a disguise? And meanwhile, his stinking dead corpse is rotting in the trunk? Yep, here you go. That'll be 1013. Uh, 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 sir, are you okay? Your face looks a little strange. Oh, uh, I'm fine. Uh, this is my regular human face. I'm just tired. Had a long day at work and doing other human things. Here you go. Uh, your order will be ready at the next window. Spidey, I think it worked. On to our next story. This one's called... The Apartment Complex. This sure is a spooky looking building, I said to myself as I looked up at the towering apartment complex before me. Something about the building seemed a little off. It definitely needed a lot of work. I glanced at my watch. The landlord was late. He was supposed to meet me here at 1 p.m. and now it's past 1. Hopefully he comes soon. I began walking around the perimeter of the apartment building, observing its deteriorating window frames, a few broken window panes, and some brownish red rusty drip stains that painted various parts of the building. If the inside is anything like the outside, I'll have my work cut out for me. I found this ad a couple of days ago on Craigslist that read, apartment complex in need of super slash janitor for building maintenance free rent. I looked into it and it seemed like a good deal. The deal is, I get to fix up the place here and there and do some janitorial things. And in return, I get to live in the apartment complex for free. It was good timing for me since my lease was just about up and I was in need of a new job. I'd been living previously in Salem for five plus years and this gig was only about 30 minutes northwest in Andover. After completing a circle around the building, I looked at my watch again. It was 1.25. Still no sign of the landlord. It suddenly occurred to me that this was all a mistake. The landlord must have found someone else to do the job and forgot to tell me. I started to walk back to the car, my new home. Hello there. Whoa, you scared me. You must be Dan. Pleasure to meet your acquaintance. Yeah, and you must be Vlad? Sorry I'm late. I got caught up in a tricky situation. Yes, very, very tricky. No, it won't happen again. Definitely won't happen again. I'm sorry, what happened? Oh, nothing. I won't bore you with the details. Come, let me show you around the complex. Sounds good. So, this is Shadow Complex. Hey, what's up with the name Shadow Complex? Sounds very ominous and dark. Oh, it's nothing, really. Just a silly name. Names mean nothing. Watch your step. Wait, what step? There was no step anywhere in sight. This guy is really strange. So this is the lobby of the main floor. You'll find a lot of equipment in the janitorial closet at the end of the hallway. Although, you won't find it now, because we can't seem to find the keys to the closet. We also can't find the person who had the keys. The other janitor. I'm sorry, 
Did you just say you can't unlock the janitorial closet because the key's lost and also the janitor is lost? Is he missing? He's not so much missing as he is gone. Milton, our other janitor, frequently goes missing. It's normal for him. He should be back in a few days, tops. Oh, okay. What's up with this wall? That's our community chalkboard wall. We let the tenants write whatever they like on it. Messages to each other, words of caution, or just draw for fun. The wall looked like a mess of scribbles with a few nice drawings mixed in. Let's use the elevator. Your room's on the top floor, the fourth floor. So you can relax the rest of today. Tomorrow will be your first official day starting work. This is our floor. Let me show you to your room. The hallway was dimly lit and felt a little sketchy. The wallpaper was peeling off and there was even trash littered on the floor. I was starting to worry about how bad my apartment was going to be. Here it is. X marks the spot. There was a giant X written on the outside of the door. Wait, what's with the X? A disgruntled tenant did that a while ago. You're free to scrub it off, if you can. Vlad swung the door open to the apartment and motioned for me to come inside. Let me know if you have any questions. I have some more business to tend to. I actually do have some questions. Uh, oh, okay. He's gone. I walked further into the apartment and was pleasantly surprised. It was fully furnished, and it was in pretty good shape too, despite being frozen in time in the 80s. I put down my things and made my way through the kitchen. There was something that smelled, smelled good. I looked on the kitchen table and saw a freshly baked pie with a note that read, Enjoy from the Shadow Complex. That's pretty nice they'd make me a whole pie. I hadn't eaten since yesterday, so I grabbed a fork and a plate and dug in. Mmm, shepherd's pie, with maybe the most flavorful beef I've ever tasted. Mmm, so good. I ate the whole pie in one sitting. With a full belly, I went over to the couch and laid down. I felt a sense of relief and happiness wash over me. This was turning out to be a pretty good decision after all, taking this job. Before I knew it, my eyes grew heavy and I fell asleep. Suddenly, I woke up startled, not sure where I was at first. I was in a dark, dark room. Then, I realized it was nighttime and I was in my new apartment and was relieved. I checked my watch and saw it was half past nine. As I sat up on the couch, I felt a bad migraine set in. My stomach was feeling queasy too. I hope there wasn't something wrong with that pie. I felt a breeze and saw that the window was still open and the curtains were blowing around, so I went over and shut it. I looked outside at the city below. It seemed like a ghost town. I went over to the lamp and turned the switch, when suddenly there was a loud pop and a bright flash. Shoot, the bulb must have gone out. Just then, I heard a sound. I stopped to listen. There was something in the room with me. I looked into the darkness of the living room, but could see nothing. I thought I saw shadows moving, but I couldn't make out what it was. I could hear and see nothing. I swallowed hard. I stood there in the near pitch black, my eyes wide open, my ears waiting to hear any sort of sound, when suddenly it came. Hi, McSpooky Deluxe, no onions, extra pickles on the side, and a vanilla milkshake with whipped cream? Yes, yes, that's correct, puny human. I mean, fellow human. Where is it, where is it, where is it? Here it is, ghosty McGhost ghost. I got it, I got the toy I wanted. Have a good night. Uh, sir, is your face okay? You mean this face? Uh, have a good night. <laughs> it worked. We did it, Spidey. Woohoo, yeah.
you got it. Yay. I'm gonna shoot my web in celebration. Pew. That was one web. Pew. And <laughs> that was another one. Well, I guess I'll head home now so I can play with my toy. To hear the thrilling conclusion of the apartment complex, plus other spooky surprises, tune in to a special Halloween episode of Spooky Stories on the 31st of this month. See you then, my fellow ghouls. <laughs> <laughs>